Hi everyone, Byron Martin here at Logis Greenhouses, and today we're going to be talking about caring for succulents. They're very popular house plants, they're great for windowsills, and many people grow them, and many people have success with them, but there are always questions on what's the best way to take care of them. Here we have a collection of some of them that we grow here at Logis. Many of these flower. This is a euphorbia. These are hybrid euphorbias. Um, that's a crown of thorns that have been houseplants for generations. And these are just very large hybrids of those. They are really great houseplants in the terms of drought stress and free flowering. And so we right now are going into our winter period, but as the season goes on, they'll go into a slight dormancy, and then they come out and they'll flower all through the summertime for you. They're really, as I mentioned, they're easy to grow. They really need that dry down, particularly in the winter time, as many succulents do. So you can grow them on the dry side. If you put them under stress of coolness and dryness, they actually will defoliate and go dormant or they're deciduous. And then in the springtime, they'll burst back out into growth and quickly come back into flower. The key to their success in flowering, of course, is light, as many things are. So they're really a plant that doesn't want shade. If you want to get the best out of them, you need to keep them in a sunny window. And I'll say this to cover all succulents, the best way to water them is to bring them to dryness and then give them a thorough drink. Bring them to dryness and give them a thorough drink. Next we have some plants that are in the genus Stapelia that are dryland plants. Many of them are crawling or creeping and actually make good baskets. Their flowers um, are very small like this one. This is Stapelia schitula. And then we have some that are actually very large, Stapelia gigantea, the flowers are immense. So they come in all sizes and to some degree shapes, but they always look like that with their star shapes to them. This is a Huania here, this is the lifesaver plant. You can see it has that ring to it, but you notice the structure of the flower is very much the same. These, again, dryland plants, they come from Africa where they go through these long periods of drought. They really don't like to be overwatered, but as is the case with most succulents, more water in the summer, less in the winter time, but quite easy to grow. And they can get quite large in terms of the spread on them over a period of time. This is another group of succulents that makes great hanging baskets. These Senecios are the trailing types. Senecio is a very big genus, it's got a lot of plants in it. But these are succulents that um, again come out of Africa and they trail over the edge. They have kind of insignificant flowers to them. Some of them actually have an, a smell or an odor to them. They come in different shapes. This is a little round one you can see. This is called String of Pearls. It's been grown for many, many years as a house plant. And they'll actually drape over the edge and you have to snip them back to contain them, otherwise they'll go down to the floor. This is a common one which is called string of dolphins, which has this kind of curved leaf to it. And we have another larger form called string of watermelons. Really, the culture on those is all the same, and they really are hanging baskets. It's something you need to get a hook and hang them in the window so that they can drape down. Uh, this is a succulent that we've grown for a number of years. This is Trachodiadema densum, which is quite slow, and it actually makes a good bonsai if you pull it out of its pot and then strip the soil away and expose the cortex that's underneath this. But if you don't do that and you grow it on a windowsill with very high light and where it's warm and dry, it comes into flower with a burst of these brilliant purple flowers. And during its off season, it remains green like this, although Normally it would go through a very dry period where this would shrivel up somewhat and that's a good time to take a vacation and then come back, give them a drink, they puff right up again and they'll go back into their growth and in the summertime they go into their flowering cycle. But it's very easy to grow but very slow growing for us so it takes a number of years to get a pot um, even as big as this. Another plant that has been around for a very long time in terms of house plants and its indestructibility is the Sansevieria. This one here is called Sansevieria cylindrica and you can see it has that kind of spiny outward flaring foliage to it. But the culture on this is really easy to the extent that if you want to go away for a three-month vacation you will come back and find your Sansevieria happily waiting for a drink. Many of the Sansevierias have really beautiful variegation in them. Some are white, this one has the gold variegation with a green center to it. Some are really large, the whale's tail gets about yay big or even bigger. And then there's some very small ones also. So you got some that can fit on windowsills and some that would actually make, almost make floor plants. And this is a variety called gold dust. Lots of choices and really indestructible. 
Next we have the adeniums, often called desert rose, but really they thrive on water in the summertime. So many people in Florida will grow these as a garden potted plant and their summers are usually wet and their winters are dry. And they thrive under those wet, wet summers where thunderstorms are coming through. The only key, of course, is to have really good drainage on them because they don't tolerate wet feet. But they do tolerate a good amount of water. And then in the wintertime, that's the dry season, they can go for weeks and almost months without any water, in which case they will defoliate. They'll drop all their leaves, obviously, and go into sort of a semi-dormant state. Then as the water comes and the light increases, they burst back into growth. And these flowers form throughout the summertime. Uh, there's many, many hybrids being done on this. And so you've got a lot of choice of colors on that. One other thing is these can get quite stalky. And after that dormant period, if you simply snip them back like that, they break right out and you can get um, multiple leads coming off of them so they aren't so tall. It's also another way to contain them. And lastly, we have a Semper Vivens. These are commonly grown outside. They're hardy perennials, but also can be grown inside as um, windowsill plants. They they're commonly known as hens and chicks. As you can see, they have offsets. That's the little chick part of it. There's many forms of these, and even to the degree there's some colors that come out of them. We actually have one here, which is called coral red. You can see the blooms on this, by the way. They do flower, which is interesting, but this one actually has a redder tone to it. Most of that color will come out in the higher light. If you give them less light or diffusion and such, then everything mutes out, as is the case with most plants. As far as containers go, uh, most plants that love dry lands love clay pots. I love clay pots too, but they can be grown in plastic as is the case. It's just, again, that watering cycle that you pay attention to. And as far as insects go, they're pretty resistant to most things. Uh, they can have problems with mealybugs. Sometimes it'll get down into the center of the crowns. But other than that, they're pretty much insect free. And of course, diseases are non-issue because you're keeping them so dry and the root systems are dry that the diseases can't actually even get started, let alone um, cause problems for you. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you learned something about caring for the succulents that you grow. If you'd like more information, visit us at logis.com.